Roger Ayer is a writer, editor, and cultural critic. He blogs and is a senior editor at the American Conservative uh, and has written a number of books as well, including uh, his most recent book, The Benedict Option. I was really glad for the opportunity to meet Rod recently, and he graciously agreed to sit down for an interview. So without further ado, I hope you'll enjoy this episode from my interview with Rod Dreher. Outside the Orthodox Church, it's the same thing that all Orthodox say: "Come and see." Uh, I have tried to explain to people I meet who are curious about Orthodoxy. Uh, I've tried to tell them why I'm Orthodox. Why I think they should be Orthodox. But there's nothing that can is better than just come into the Divine Liturgy or come to Vespers. Come see it for yourself, and don't just come once. Don't just come once or twice keep coming, because I remember the first time I came to a divine liturgy, I was overwhelmed by the beauty of it, but it was also pretty confusing. It took several times for me to get into the rhythm of it. And uh, I find with the new catechumens and uh, at our church, they all say the same thing, that they were a little bit unnerved at first, but there was something about the depth and the beauty that really captured them, captured their imagination and captured their heart. Orthodoxy is so unlike any other form of Christianity you're going to find today. And uh, I find especially having come out of the Catholic Church and, um, and loving what is good about the Catholic Church, I tell my Catholic friends who are maybe struggling with their Catholicism right now, I say, come to Orthodoxy because you will probably find there the things that you love about Catholicism, but so much more. You know, and I don't say that to in a... I love Catholicism. I love what the Lord did for me there. I want to be a help and an encourage to my Catholic friends. But uh, some of them say, why don't you come back to be Catholic again? I'm like, because I found the truth. And, uh, and I, I think that if a lot of them and a lot of dissatisfied Protestants, if they would just put aside whatever their prejudices are about uh, the ethnicity in the Orthodox Church, the tribe at prayer, that is true in some Orthodox parishes, sadly. I've been to those parishes. But um, more often than not, what you will find are people who were converts. You know, in this country, you'll find people who are converts, like me, who found an Orthodoxy a pearl of great price and, uh, and who came to understand the Lord, came to understand ourselves far more deeply than we ever could have imagined through the practice of Orthodox Christianity. It's not something you can get just from a book. Um, you can read all the books you want, and people like me, that's the first thing we try to do. What should I read? Well, there's a list of books you can read, but again, nothing will substitute for coming and being there, smelling the wax and the incense, hearing the chants, watching the people all around you prostrate themselves, especially during, um, during the first week of Lent. I mean, those, those services for me were one of the most powerful forms of conversion. I remember my first, um, first forgiveness vespers. I wasn't even Orthodox then, but to, there in the cathedral, St. Seraphim in Dallas, watching every single person in that cathedral bend down, ask forgiveness of every other person, including the 81-year-old Archbishop Dimitri Royster, watching him do this in front of little kids, Wow, what an icon of total submission to God. That's, you can't get that anywhere else. Come and see. One thing I've learned from being Orthodox is that Orthodoxy is not just what you believe, what you profess, but it's the way you live. So for me, it's hard to, to come up with a, divided, a clear dividing line between my work as a journalist and a writer and my Orthodox faith because Orthodoxy, Christianity, uh, it, it fills everything that I do, and it needs to, if I'm living right, the older I get, the more it needs to fill everything that I do. Now, I, I wrote a book called The Benedict Option, which uh, was very popular, and even though it's not an Orthodox book, it comes from my experience as a, as a thinker, but also as an Orthodox Christian. 
the book in brief, it's about how Christians should live in this post-Christian age, in an age of disintegration uh, and dissolution, where the world has left Christianity behind. How can we as faithful Christians, not just Orthodox Christians, but Catholics and Protestants too, how can we hold on to our faith? And um, I'm, in a, I'm giving a talk at the conference at the, uh, at the Holy Trinity Seminary about orthodoxy and the Benedict Option. The first time in the two years since the book has come out that I've been able to talk specifically about orthodoxy and the Benedict Option because most of my audiences have been Protestant or Catholic. But deep down, I think that the Benedict Option, which is what I call the way all Christians are going to need to live, after St. Benedict of uh, Nursia. Um, orthodoxy is the fullest expression of it because orthodoxy does not make this, does not observe this false division between church and life. You know, so it, even when I am writing about politics or some cultural issue that's not explicitly Christian, it's all informed by my orthodox understanding, including my orthodox understanding of what a person is and what right and wrong uh, are. So um, for me, I, I, I sit, I write at home, I work from home, I don't have an office, and I'm always working in front of icons. So through the icons, the Lord, my patron saint, Benedict of Nursia, and a, a saint that I'm also particularly close to, Saint Genevieve of Paris, um, they're all watching me, and uh, I hope keeping me on the straight and narrow. Hi again, hope you enjoyed this episode from my interview with Rod Dreher. Please let me know what you thought of this episode in the comments section below. And please subscribe to get notified when new episodes become available, which happens every Friday. Have a great weekend, and we will see you next week.